Hello everyone, welcome to this talk. Um, today I'm going to talk about computational hardness of optimal fair computation beyond Minicrypt. This is a joint work with Hamata Manji. So in this talk, we will be talking about coin tossing protocols. So a coin tossing protocol is a two-party interactive protocol between Alice and Bob. We assume that parties exchange a total of R messages and we assume that parties always agree on the output when the protocol ends. So fair coin tossing consider the following setting where a malicious party may prematurely abort the execution of the protocol. So the fairness guarantees that the honest party should always receive the output of the protocol. Therefore, when the malicious party abort, the honest party should still output a defense as his output of the protocol. The unfairness is uh, defined as how much a malicious party can deviate the expected output of the honest party. So let me first summarize the state of the art result through the lens of Impagliazzo's five words. So Impagliazzo proposed his famous five words by based on what hardness of computation is true and what hardness of computational assumption is false. So for example, in Passiland, Passiland is a world where even one-way functions do not exist. And a Minicrypt is a world where one-way function and henceforth all, all the symmetric primitives such as commitment schemes exist, but public key primitives do not exist. And finally, cryptomania is the world where uh, all the primitives such as public key encryption and oblivious transfers uh, exist. So firstly, a two-party two coin tossing protocol can be think of as a two-party zero-sum game. Hence, information theoretically, there exists an attacker that imposes constant unfairness. And in his celebrated work, Papa Dimitro showed that finding such attacks is P space complete. However, Heitner and Omri show that if one function do not exist, then you can simulate such attacks reasonably well and still achieve constant unfairness. Uh, if we consider a, a, a type of adversary called fail stop adversaries, um, so such adversaries behave honestly. Uh, during the execution of the protocol, and their only malicious behavior is to prematurely abort. So in this groundbreaking result, uh, work by Cleve and Impagliado, they show that even for the fair stop adversary, uh, one can impose a one by square root of R unfairness. So intuitively, their result can be think of as a reverse theorem for Azuma's inequality where if you have a martingale that goes from half to zero and one, there must exist a step where the jump in the, in, in the uh, expected output is at least one over root of R. So in 1980s, after a sequence of important works, we have constructed this protocol, uh, namely the majority protocol, where we know that for majority protocols is one by R unfair, unfair against the fair stop adversaries. So majority protocol is, uh, matches the lower bound proved by, proven by Cleve and Impagliazzo. And if you assume one of the functions exist, then you can use commitment schemes to upgrade such protocols to be secure against the full, fully fledged adversaries. So in another celebrated work by Cleve, he showed that any coin tossing protocol is at least one over R unfair. So Cleve's result is very strong in the sense that regardless of what computational assumption you assume, it is any coin tossing protocol is at least one over R, one over R unfair. So one of, hence a, uh, a one over R unfair coin tossing protocol is called optimal fair coin tossing. So for a long time, we do not know whether optimal fair coin tossing exists or not. And it is a surprising when Moran, Nao, and Sugi finally show that by relying on oblivious transfer, you do can construct a optimal fair coin tossing. 
And finally, very recently, uh, our, re our Crypto20 work showed that um, any optimal coin, any coin tossing protocol uh, using one way function in a black box manner is at least one over root R unfair. So let me now color code this table into uh, green colors and red colors. So here, all the green constructions in the green colors are those protocols that are one by root R unfair. And also the adversarial attacks are those adversaries that can impose a one over root R unfairness. On the other hand, the red cell here, the MNS protocol, is a protocol that achieves one over R unfairness. And the cleavage attack is also an attack that imposes one of our unfairness. So given this uh, state of the art result, it is a natural question to ask whether oblivious transfer is necessary for optimal fair coin tossing. So for example, can we construct opt one of our unfair coin tossing by relying on public key encryption? Also, it is another natural question to ask, does there exist fair coin tossing with intermediate unfairness. For example, maybe relying on public key encryption, we can find a, a coin tossing protocol that achieves one over R to the three over four unfairness, which is strict, strictly between one over R and one over root R. So in this work, we rule out such possibilities. So firstly, we show that any coin tossing protocol that uses public key encryption in a black box manner is at least one over root R unfair. And additionally, we consider the setting where parties not only have public key encryption, but they also have access to, uh, access to a trusted party that realizing some functionality, possibly randomized functionality F. So this is namely the, uh, the F hybrid model. So we've shown that um, even given uh, F hybrid, where assuming that this F hybrid does not facilitate oblivious transfer, then even uh, this protocol, uh, coin tossing protocol, is at least one over root R unfair. So we completely squeeze, squeeze out all the room here, possibility that to construct a fair coin tossing protocol by using other, uh, uh, by relying on other assumptions. So note that this F hybrid could be potentially useful for achieving various tasks. Here, we are showing that F hybrid is completely useless for the task of uh, fair coin tossing. So what I have shown you here might trick you into believing that we have resolved everything. Uh, well, we haven't. So it, uh, before I will go further, let me stress what are the open problems that we did not prove. So for example, one thing that we did not prove is that we did not present a set of oracles relative to which a secure protocol for F exists but optimal fair and coin tossing protocol does not exist relative to this set of oracles. So in other words, we did not prove a black box separation between securely realizing F and optimal fair coin tossing. We are only giving parties access to a trusted party realizing F. So the difference between these two settings is that when party are given access to a set of oracle, uh, that facilitates function F, they might not use this set of oracles in ways, uh, uh, they might not use it only to evaluate F, they might use this set of oracles in other ways. So this is why this problem is very challenging and we, have not, uh, we did not prove this. Let me stress that if one, if one uh, does prove such a black box separation, then it implies a black box separation between securely realizing an incomplete functionality F and oblivious transfer. This is one of the major open problems in the field and it's incredibly, incredibly challenging. So what we prove in this work can be seen as a partial progress towards this ultimate goal. 
So finally, let me compare our work with uh, a, a relevant work by uh, Hatner, Omri, uh, Hatner, Markarianis, and Omri. Uh, they prove that for any constant r, the existence of an r coin tossing protocol with unfairness uh, less than one over root r implies the existence of key agreement protocols. So their, pro their result is incomparable to ours as they prove a stronger consequence, but only for constant, constant round protocols. So now let me set up uh, uh, our, uh, um, tell you what our model is. So in, 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 in our work, we define a set of oracles O that facilitates public key encryption. So Alice and Bob have Oracle set access to this Oracle O. And additionally, they have access to a trusted party realizing F. So they can send their respective input X and Y to the trusted party and receive the evaluation uh, from, from the trusted party. So it is important to note that this function F is realized unfairly. So that means the adversary gets to receive the output first, and then he may abort the protocol after receiving the output. And by doing so, he blocks the output delivery to the honest party. So the reason why we assume this F is realized unfairly is because if you are given a fair access to a fair uh, functionality F, then perfectly fair coin tossing is possible. So for example, assuming this F is the functionality X or, now consider this a very simple protocol where Alice just sample her input randomly and Bob also sam sample his input randomly. They just send their input X and Y to the trusted party and receive the uh, output uh, as uh, uh, receive the output from the trusted party and output it as the output of the protocol. You can prove that this protocol is uh, perfectly fair. So therefore, we assume this uh, F is always realized unfairly. So given this model, what we prove is that there exists a fair stop adversary who could deviate the expected output of the honest party by one over root R. And this adversary asks at most polynomially additional queries to the random uh, to the or, uh, to Oracle O. So our proof follows largely from the prior works of Ma Jian Wang, uh, 2020, uh, where in in that work uh, we show uh, we present a fair stop attacker that deviates the expected output of honest party by one over root r for any coin tossing in the random oracle model. So what we uh, observe in this work is that we note their attacker generalizes to other settings as long as one can ensure the following invariant. So this invariant is that if, if we have that Alice and Bob's private view are always close to independent condition on the partial transcript. As long as this invariant always holds during the execution of the protocol, then their uh, fair stop attacker will always work. So for example, in the random Oracle model, they ensure this invariant by relying on the uh, uh, well-known technique called heavy query in the random Oracle, in the random Oracle model. So our separation from public key encryption relies on this uh, result from uh, Mohamed Maji and Prabhakaran um, from TCC 2014. In, in this work, they define a set of Oracle O that facilitates PKE. And they show that for any two-party interactive protocol between Alice and Bob, uh, there is a, uh, uh, what they call a common, common information learner that ask polynomially many queries to ensure that Alice and Bob's private view are close to independent. So their results together with the attacker from Margin 1 2020 ensures uh, that, uh, gives the result that any coin tossing protocol that uses public key encryption in a black box manner 
is at least one over root r unfair. So finally, we prove this dichotomy result for uh, f hybrid. So given any randomized functionality f, one can ask the following question, does f hybrid facilitate oblivious transfer or not? So if the answer is yes, then such functionalities are called complete functionalities. And since you can implement OT in F hybrid, then you can implement the MNS protocol. Uh, recall that MNS pro protocol is a protocol that is optimally fair by relying on oblivious transfer. Then with access to this F hybrid that facilitate OT, one can achieve optimal fair coin tossing uh, in the F hybrid model. On the other hand, if the answer to this question is no, that means f this functionality f is incomplete. Then, uh, by this beautiful work of Killian, who show that, uh, who gives such a characterization that for any such incomplete functionality f, condition on the partial view, uh, a condition on the partial transcript, Alice and Bob's private view are always independent. Then the invariant. Uh, always hold, and hence the uh, margin once attacker will therefore work. So any coin tossing protocol in an in, uh, in, in an F hybrid where F is incomplete is at least one over square root of R unfair. So therefore, in F hybrid, there are only two possibilities: where F is complete, then optimal fair coin tossing protocol exists, or if F is un incomplete then F hybrid is completely useless for the task of uh, uh, fair coin tossing. So let me provide you some additional perspective on why this result could be technically challenging. So for an incomplete functionality F, there could be two possibilities. First, there might exist a T round secure protocol for F. Then you might wanna re replace this F hybrid with this T round protocol that realizes F. However, once you replace this one round access to a F hybrid with a T round secure protocol, then the round complexity of the protocol get blow up by a factor of T. Hence, just to rule out a fair opt just to rule out optimal fair coin tossing in the plane model is not uh, and uh, is not sufficient to prove that um, F hybrid uh, optimal fair coin tossing is uh, impossible in the F hybrid model where F might have a T round secure protocol. On the other hand, uh, this in, for an incomplete functionality F, there might not exist a security secure protocol for F. And this F hybrid have been shown to be useful for other tasks. For example, Rosulek and Shirley show that F hybrid could be useful to uh, securely realizing some other functionality G. And here for the task of coin tossing, uh, fair coin tossing, we show that F hybrid is completely useless. So uh, with that, I'd like to conclude my talk here and I will refer you to the full version of our paper for more details. Thank you.